So with all that said, we've reached the end of our core presentations here, and I do want to open things up for questions from the audience. Again, you can hit us on either the Q&A functionality or the chat functionality. But I also wanted to open things up to our broader uh, pool of presenters and, and guests here today uh, with just a few questions to get things rolling. So, you know, one of the things I always like to, to ask up front is, and this goes out to anyone uh, on our host panel here, uh, is were there any key takeaways that jumped out at you uh, from today's conversation? Anything that kind of rung true or or is kind of rattling around in your mind after the conversation? Well, well um, I'll just jump in, Chris. I, I was excited to hear uh, Matt Fields' comments uh, about uh, about AMS. Obviously, I mean, I think that's that's just a huge validation of the. Our efforts there, and and uh, I'm just thrilled that uh, that he sees it that way. Uh, they're a happy customer, and um, it's really been a, a journey for them as well as us this year. So uh, thrilled by that. That was my favorite Absolutely. part for sure. I Absolutely. Would say, I would say what I heard pretty clearly was that uh, you know going into any uh, new adoption cloud journey with a partner and a plan is going to be instrumental because. You know, it's trying to to figure out how to do that surgery yourself on yourself is is a daunting task, right? So, um, you know, having the 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 expertise day in and day out and a partner is definitely the right way to go. Absolutely. Anything else? If not, I can move on to some of this uh, poll converse conversation. All right, so Jennifer in the background on the marketing team put together an awesome slide with the poll results, but I don't want to break away because we've got a few more slides I need to share. But I will just kind of dust in to get things rolling here. I'm looking at the that third question that you opened up around the balancing act of, of quality, cost, and security and sort of how people stacked ranked. And the clear winner here is security's mission zero, right? Uh, followed by quality as second most important and then cost trailing. And then uh, secondary to that is security first and then cost and then quality. But but the margin between those two is absolutely huge. And in fact, someone uh, in the chat said, uh, I accidentally put the wrong order in. There is no way I would sacrifice cost over quality. Yeah. I thought that was that was particularly interesting. So I know you have some thoughts around that. I'd, I'd love to hear. You, you yeah, share. you know, it, it, I uh, so I, I could have. I could have almost guaranteed. I would have bet the farm that those were the results we would get. Um, I, you know, like I said, I've I've hosted uh, two of these roundtables now, with a third one coming up here in a couple of weeks, uh, and it, pretty much across the board, almost without exception, that is that is the uh, the the mark of it. The thing that folks need to really think about is, you know. Every every platform and application that you have in your stack is purpose built, right? It serves a particular need. And so there are some areas and some applications where security may not be the concern for you, right? Um, and, and that's okay. Um, and there are others where, you know, if, if the internal user is affected, I mean, obviously you want quality to be job one, but um, if it's an internal product as opposed to an external product, where we put our emphasis and our our resources may change, and and I've seen that in conversations that I've had, but pretty much to a T, um, security is the last thing that most folks are are willing to sacrifice. Yeah, makes perfect sense. Yeah, makes perfect. Sense. Yeah, so um, you know our partners at AWS obviously are are at the end ending up uh, their their reinvent. Uh, um, program, obviously, a huge event for them. And I know many of us are pay very close attention. Some of us attended the event. Um, I was curious if uh, across all the announcements so far um, with AWS, you know, being, you know, the big player in the space for a cloud, did anything jump out at anyone? I, I certainly had some thoughts I could share, but I'm curious if anyone else, you know, looking across the announcements at reInvent or just the, the, the messaging at reInvent had any takeaways they wanted to share with the larger group here. I think for me, you know, as, as folks maybe process it a little bit more, one thing that's, you know, becoming very clear is that as this market matures and as AWS, you know, no one spins up new services faster, right? No one innovates faster. And it seems that they're just launching just 
dozens of very discrete services for very specific specific industries and to, to solve very specific problems, right? And it's really up to organizations like InterVision to interpret all those services and bundle them in ways that are digestible solutions, right? Because I think we've talked a lot about almost like the puzzle pieces that, that AWS puts together. And it's it's not often easy to understand how the, those puzzle pieces can fit together. Um, they're certainly leading the way in terms of the services, but um, you know, I think that for me at least, I see it as an opportunity for you know organizations at, like InterVision and the smart folks we have here to kind of make sense of all those discrete services to build more comprehensive solutions that again get to the the outcomes that we've talked about so much today. Yeah, and add, I'd add to that, Chris, that uh, one of the uh, observations was around some of the announcements for ransomware partners are. Uh, uh, where they announced relationships with uh, Veeam and Commvault and Zerto and and services and our partners in technology that Intervision has already uh, built professional services and solutions around to bring those to market. So uh, it's it's not only validation that we're in the right direction from what we're how we're interpreting uh, the market and bringing it to our our, our customers but also that uh, AWS is investing heavily uh, in those same areas uh, which is a win for everybody in the end as they become more mature as they become more commodity and flexible uh, in the way that they can be implemented absolutely thank you so much for that Ben yeah, it's a big event. I'm still digesting, right? There's so much that's announced at the at the reinvented. Uh, I just thought I'd bring it up as a question for this hey, audience. Chris is Jonathan. Let me let me add. I was very fortunate enough to be in a session with, and like today, my biggest takeaways are customer testimonials. Um, I was I was in an executive session at reinvent uh, yesterday, and I was very fortunate to hear the program leader from Pfizer talk about the impact that cloud and specifically Amazon has had in their reality challenge of taking an eight month process to develop new vaccines into four weeks. And how, I think to Dustin's earlier point, like the challenge is to move from run thinking to innovation and to rethink process and people in real time as a result of what the cloud brings. So they were talking about moving a global approach of um, scientists in real time to update data sets every 40 seconds. And we're talking, you can imagine the volumes of, 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 of uh, data from geolocation to hot zone to, and they were, they were able to do this with Amazon's help, but equally important was the mention around the partner community and how it was a group thing that, that areas of Amazon were superb but only came together and i think i just heard it mentioned right with the right advice around the right security the right dr underlining it the right services and the right support and managed service to be able to actually achieve that now i know pfizer is a very very large company right with with immeasurable resources both financially and people but um you know they they face the same technology technical debt and they turn to the cloud and they turn to partnerships like like we have to be able to rethink and use moving from run thinking to innovation. And they talked about AI and ML and how to apply advanced thinking to modern tools and in, in a traditional challenge and reinvent process as a result. It was it was compelling and I'll add another, right? It was balanced by Formula One. They, the CIO for Formula One gets up after Pfizer speaks and says, my organization's 400 people. But what I do is I globally engineer fan experience every minute. And I do it with a modern, younger audience that expects a consumer relationship, like their iPhone. In the So it was a fascinating chance to see how not just big companies, but really small companies too are, are really uh, poised to move to innovation and to competitive differentiation and to innovate more effectively with modern thinking and process in addition to great tools. And, and I think it's all about partnership. It's my, it was my takeaway from, uh, from that executive session. And I thought I'd add that on because it was 
to me, it was very powerful. And, and like I started with, the, the most value I get is to hear the application of the technology around business camera and to really see what the measurable benefits are, whether it's in time or dollars or innovative or, or competitive leapfrog. They're all very measurable impacts. Anyway, thanks, Chris. Absolutely. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's a, that's a great point, you know, and I think that uh, not too much pressure on folks like Dustin and Ben and and Matt on our team and, and uh, David, but, you know, being able to elevate the conversation around what's the business outcome you're, you're really trying to achieve here? Because, you know, again, you know, we've, we've said it several times, but the cloud is an unprecedented tool, but it is, it is still just a tool and the cloud alone is not going to get you there, right? You really got to know what the strategy is. And I think having really bright people like Dustin and Ben and, and David and, and Matt um, really, you know, allow us to kind of have those conversations and, and drive those outcomes. So thanks for that, uh, that input, Jonathan. I, I really appreciate it. So um, I want to keep things moving. You know, we're right, we're pretty much right around time here, but uh, I will throw one more question out here. I'm looking, um, what was something from the audience? So, you know, taking that first step to cloud, how, how do you, identify that maybe there's challenges before they become a, a larger problem like any thoughts you have around a uh, team around you know what 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 can you look for that maybe things aren't going the way they need to before it becomes like a major security issue or, or a problem down the line yeah i my experience is that you 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 hope for the best but you plan for the worst right so in many areas it's sort of like we all take a security posture today that assumes we're compromised and you behave in a way that um that you uh you have a zero trust approach and i think the same thing is true relative to cloud adoption right you 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 assume that each step could go potentially wrong which is why you want to automate as much as you possibly can to remove that human element of uh, not not to remove the people component of it, but the 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 possibility for mistakes to be made. And so, and and I think that you know you iterate and you and the other thing I would say is, you know, I've seen a lot of success from a software engineering approach, and this is why people go to more agile methodologies. Break the work down into its smallest digestible chunks, um, and really plan your approach that way. You know, we take that approach in our methodology as we build out CLA, whether it's for migration or optimization, you know, it's take an item, address it, measure it, and then move on to the next one. But we always go back and part of that integration is, is verifying that you didn't break anything else along the way. So, you know, a really methodical approach that is also predicated on what are, what are we going to measure to determine our success criteria along the way and don't have too many measures of success. Pick two or three, because if you're measuring everything and you then something changes, you're not sure what it was, right? So keep it simple, break it down into its smallest digestible chunks, and and just assume that everything is at risk. Great point, Dustin. Yeah. All right. Well, if there isn't anything else, I think that was a good conversation, and thank you uh, again to everyone for attending here. And um, and uh, and uh, joining us, you know, we've had a couple of hundred folks on for this entire call, and it's it's been a, a great conversation. And definitely appreciate you uh, joining us. I have just a couple of of uh, slides with Dustin, just some things to talk through. But at the end of the day, guys, you know, I hope that this conversation has helped illuminate uh, this concept of driving driving outcomes, right? And that's really what InterVision is here to do. And if you go and look at our website, there are several examples of us helping organizations accelerate in their cloud migration and adoption, right? Not only the migration, but the actual adoption of the cloud platform, helping them secure and modernize their operations, control and predict costs. Cost is a big concern in, in cloud, right? As, as a Several folks touched on things can get awry pretty quickly with the, how quickly you can scale cloud. And so, you know, it's really about driving those transformational outcomes for our, for our clients. And, and I hope that the conversation today has helped make that a little bit more real for you. Those of you who are already clients and maybe only know a sliver of what we do, or those of you who are maybe new to Univision and, and haven't, haven't worked with us, you know, that really was trying to illustrate that at the end of the day, we're here to help drive those transformational outcomes. And finally, you know, you've heard you've heard it over and over again, but it's really about coupling that deep experience we have across cloud platforms and the data center 
and combining that together to help bridge that gap, right? Where you are today with where you need to be and combining all of our expertise, our experience, our certifications across both AWS and Azure and even private cloud, right? There's some instances where that's still a, a very valid choice, especially when security and compliance is a, is a big factor. And really integrating all of that into a, a single a single strategic service provider platform and delivering it through our cloud lifecycle assurance program that really, I think, separates us in the market. Dustin, anything else you want to add on that before I, I move on to the, the raffle? Yeah, I, I think the other piece is really remember that, you know, the cloud is not just somebody else's data center, right? We're, we're really making a shift to the consumption model so that we can take advantage not only of some of the efficiencies that we can gain uh, by, you know, from whether it be from cost or quality or, or security, but also the, the other offerings that the cloud uh, providers bring to bear, right? You, you now have a more robust approach to data analysis and you now have access to AI and ML without having to have necessarily data scientists on board. And if you don't know how to get started in that entire approach, that's what we're here for, right? We not only, our job is not just to do what you tell us to do, but our job is also to tell you kind of the, the art of the possible. And, um, and, you know, that's a term that, um, that AWS uses a lot. We go through a lot of sessions with them on this and the art of the possible is what we bring to bear so that you not only know. You can get to the cloud with fidelity, but also what the other advantages are that you can take and learn and grow and expand your, your use case. So uh, just keep all that in mind. That's our job. We're here to help. You know, uh, for the last 30 years, um, I've been trying to perfect this. This is why we call it a practice, uh, you know, and we, we learn every single day. But um, I think that the, the combined knowledge and strength that our engineers have, that the people on this call have and that uh, we we have by working with you, our customers, uh, it makes us all better. Um, and so thank you for that. Yeah, well, absolutely. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah, Whoever's yeah. Getting to get the prize. Yeah, yeah. So um, just real quick, you know, if, if this has sparked any interest in you, first and foremost, if you're already working with a, uh, um, a account representative, um, uh, account executive, Please reach out to them, right? And they can get the conversation rolling to you, uh, rolling with you. you can expose you to all the various funding vehicles we have through our partnerships with AWS and Azure, um, our POC programs, our our, our workshops, um, to make sure that you know you get your journey started on the right platform. But if you're not working uh, with an AWS or excuse me, an Intervision rep today, please visit intervision.com/contact. Just go to intervision.com. It's a big orange button. Click that. Fill out a form, and someone will get a hold of you right away and connect you with the right expert to continue the conversation. And uh, we really hope that you know this has sparked some interest in you, and that that you know we can we can engage with you down the line. So moving on here is the last bit of the day. Uh, uh, Jennifer, who has been Vogel on the marketing team, a fellow marketing director, has been plugging away. I want to say thank you to her for all her help in supporting this and, and making it go so smoothly. She has sent me over the two drawing uh, winners from our raffle today. So I'm going to announce these and it's just so you know, they haven't been pre-planned. I am going to struggle to pronounce both here. <laughs> so Ray Lung at MDC, that's Ray Lung at MDC. You're our first winner for today. So congratulations. And secondarily here is Raj Singh. At Optum, that's Raj Singh at Optum. Uh, we will be reaching out to you. Thank you so much uh, for joining. You are our two uh, winners. We're going to be reaching out uh, to verify your preferred mailing address and make sure that we can send you your prize, uh, which is an AWS Echo Show the second generation. So, again, thank you guys so much. And please uh, don't hesitate to reach out via intervision.com, even if you want to tell us how we, you think we did today. I, I've seen Several of you uh, say thank you in the comments here, and, and that means uh, a tremendous amount to us that you've enjoyed the conversation. Um, it's been a great, a great, uh, great conversation. One of my favorite parts of my job is just listening and hearing all this great insight from from our clients and our subject matter experts. So thanks for making a great day and have a good one. Take care.